All right. Hello and good morning, Keller Williams, Greater Metropolitan. Hope you enjoyed those extra funky jams this morning. Um, no idea what that song is, but Danielle, I'm gonna I'm gonna need that to add it to the cardio playlist going forward. That's just a joke. You guys know I don't do cardio. Let's dive right in here with a quick overview of our mission statement as a company. Um, we like to start with a piece of our mission, our vision, our values, our belief, or our perspective. Uh, for day, for, for today's conversation, um, want to zero in on the mission statement, which is to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth leaving. Um, now, if you have heard me talk about our mission statement before, um, I really like to zero in on the businesses worth owning component. Today, we're going to be talking about business, your business, um, and some tune-ups or just ways to, to do a diagnostic on your business. Super simple, super brief, super effective. And then also, it would be remiss on the eve of profit share and on the eve of the largest profit share month in the history of the company, not to talk about legacies worth leaving, which if you don't know, if you didn't know, now you know that profit share, whoops, profit share in Keller Williams is willable. And so when we talk about legacies and uh, the massive amount of passive wealth that is generated um, by our models and our systems. Part of that comes through as, uh, as profit share, which our company is number seven in the world uh, as the most profitable company. Uh, so Keller Williams has almost 900 franchises. Your market center is the seventh most profitable um, and the most efficient with its profit, meaning the largest percentage of company dollar uh, of your contribution to your cap goes to profit share more so than anywhere else in the world. Now, what's great about that is you amass this uh, great piece of passive income and that you are able to will that on one time uh, to someone else in your life when you uh, leave this world and a legacy behind it. So super excited about everything we have today. And of course, tomorrow as a part of our uh, our mission and fulfilling it. So let's start by celebrating some of our top agents. These are top agents from the month of June that were uh, top in closings for individual agents. Special shout out to Lori Degg with seven units closed in the month of June. That is huge, nearly two a week um, and very, very impressive. Gail Grau with five uh, and the rest of the crew in the middle single digits. Very, very strong months. One a week will get you 50 a year. So uh, congratulations on that. Top uh, teams for closed units in June. Uh, Want to give a couple specific shout outs here. Ina Moravin and the Distinct Home Group with 18 units closed. Uh, and for those of you who are like me, consistently confused as to what defines a team versus what defines a group. Uh, it is two licenses makes you a team, more than two makes you a group. So uh, Ina and Cassie are uh, running roughshod over the competition there with the Distinct Home Group. And then special shout out to uh, Terry Shimaleski with $6.4 million in closed business in the month of June. An absolutely monster month for her. That came through 12 units. And I'll let you do the math on uh, what, the, what the value of those homes were. So congratulations there. And our top closing groups, uh, lots of really strong performance performances here uh, with literally uh, over 100 units closed amongst all of these individuals. And then in, uh, in the market we're in, you cannot do better uh, than getting a great listing. And so these are the top agents from a listing standpoint. Um, you know, I know we just did the market update last week, and uh, I can't help myself but continue to just look at the stats. We as a, a market center are, uh, are up quite a bit in the month of July in listings. Um, 
nearly uh, double digits uh, from a percentage growth year over year. While the market that we are operating in, the total MLS is down uh, like one to two percent month to date in listings. So we are, you know, we we determine the outcomes of our business, not the market. Uh, and so even though the market is not trending up, we are from a listing standpoint, and that is a direct result of uh, of the way that you all are interfacing with your clients. Uh, I want to give a special shout out here to Mike McCandless, uh, one year anniversary with the company just a, just a couple of weeks ago and now showing up as a top lister. And then our top listing teams, uh, seeing some familiar faces there from top closings. That's just the way that listings work in this market. But uh, shout out to Kim and John Kapustik, who I think spent the better part of June visiting grandchildren in North Carolina, and we're still able to list a lot of houses. So um, there is a life by design. I've ever seen one. And then finally, our top listing groups. So again, some outstanding performance here and Larry Wonky proving that he may have been Mr. Irrelevant in 1991's NFL draft, but not when it comes to listings in Northeast Ohio. Thank you, Sean Hadley, for laughing at that joke. And then uh, our top team agents, uh, all of these folks, uh, really, really strong performances as team agents. And shout out to John Jay, who is still dealing with a newborn baby and was able to close over a million dollars in the month of June. So, guys, June was the largest month uh, from a volume and profit share standpoint in the history of our company. And so we had a lot of people achieve a lot of success. So congratulations to all of you. And, you know, um, right now, July is on pace to, uh, to rival that as well. So we are waiting with bated breath to see where the numbers roll in for the next couple of weeks. And with that, I will throw it over to Danielle Sullivan, who has, uh, who has some really exciting news uh, about the MLS. I don't want to build it up too much, Danielle, but, uh, you know, super exciting, right? I don't know how exciting it is. Um, so, yeah, our friends at MLS stopped in the office yesterday, which is why you guys received the email from me yesterday. Um, I didn't check to see if the MLS was up and running this morning, but if not, it will be by 10 a.m. And then there's a new website that you have to go to to get into your matrix. So I'll drop that in the chat for you guys. Uh, I was told that all of the other ones are still working. So for any of you that are still going to normals.com, I believe it'll still work. I know I still use Neorex, um, but they will phase those out by the end of the year. So I'll put the new, the new link into the chat box for you. Um, two other things, if you guys didn't see it, coming soon is going away. I also thought that was the end of the year, and it is August 1. So if you guys have anything coming um, soon, it just has to be live by August 1. If it is not live by August 1, um, you will receive a penalty. So if you have any questions on that, just reach out to us, obviously. Coming soon is going away. It is not a thing anymore. Um, so if you have anything coming soon by then, just make sure it goes live on August 1. The only other thing that we uh, just found out yesterday are, um, some of you may not be using them, some of you may, um, the areas in the MLS will be going away this fall. Um, so I know not a ton of people use them, but some people do. Um, so if you have any email, um, auto emails that are set up for specific areas, you are no longer able to use them coming this fall. So this is not yet, I just wanna let you guys know. Um, you will have the option now to just draw on a map. So if you want Ohio City, you will just be drawing around a certain amount, you know, and then you can save it as Ohio City, or you can save it as, you know, whatever it is that you guys want to do. So areas will be going away. That will be the new option. Um, so that is coming in the fall. And any auto emails that you have set up around areas will just be stopped if you don't correct them before that. So again, that's just why we want to let you know now. Jeremy, I am not sure what the why is behind it. Um, I do know that uh, Joyce from the MLS, when she stopped in yesterday, she said that she would come into a Tuesday team meeting and give a quick tutorial on how to change out your auto emails from, um, from areas to maps. So if you guys want that, let me know. Um, throw it in the chat box. If it's a need, we can absolutely, we can absolutely have her come in there and do that for you so that I don't screw it up. Um, but she can do that for you. That's pretty much it. Um, Colleen, it looks like the MLS is up and running, which is great. And like I said, coming soon, August 1, just make sure your stuff goes, um, just make sure your stuff is going live by then. 
cool. Um, Cindy, we do not have a date on it. So that's why we didn't send anything out. You guys will get stuff from the MLS, but if you're anything like me, I just click through it so I can start my searches. Um, so that's why she let me know yesterday and I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. Um, it is coming sometime in the fall is all I've been told so far. So coming first, August 1, hot sheets, or not hot sheets, I'm sorry. Um, areas are going away in the fall. So like I said, we'll have the MLS come in at some point during a team meeting. Um, they're also going to come back into the office and start doing classes. That is it for me, Mike. Excellent. Yeah, I definitely know the feeling every time I log into the MLS and I get I get the update. It's like, which lie do you want me to tell you that <laughs> I'll read it later? Am I muted? No, no, no. I was just saying like you just oh, click yeah. through. Like, click, yeah, which click, lie click, do you want me to tell you? I'm going to read it later or I've read this because neither of them are true. Um, but, you know, so maybe don't be don't be like me with your mls updates all right diving into upcoming events uh for this tuesday afternoon and next tuesday so every tuesday here that we've had in the month of july we have been doing uh tech tuesday one-on-one so myself danielle carrie julia sierra uh all have uh time blocks on tuesday afternoons available this month for uh, all of you to schedule any of you to schedule a one-on-one -on -one, uh, to deep dive something in command or with your technology that you need support with. So we're all cross-trained on this. We are all um, hey. you know, comfortable helping uh, helping anyone through uh, any of their challenges or helping you maximize uh, this piece, this first piece of leverage um, with your business, right? It's people, systems, and technology. Uh, are our keys to leverage. And so we wanna make sure that everybody is getting what they need here. So if you are, uh, if we can drop the survey link in the chat is just a quick, uh, quick little survey to fill out there to make sure uh, that we know what you are looking for and we can get you put together with the right person. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the Profit Share Mastermind. Uh, and so tomorrow, uh, the first month of each quarter, uh, on the 21st of that month, we hold a profit share mastermind uh, with agents who are actively engaged with, uh, who have consistently fed their profit share tree. Um, and then also I want to give the opportunity to anybody who is interested in leaning in more significantly and more seriously into profit share. Um, so this is uh, typically a conversation uh, about what uh, the what's the who's and the how's uh, of growing your profit share and how to do that in a very meaningful and relationship-based way. So the group that typically assembles here are folks that have uh, several people in their profit share tree that are earning a substantial amount of passive income. So a great opportunity to learn, um, but know that this is a mastermind like any other where we are coming together to solve problems and bring people, uh, bring people into more opportunity. Uh, that is going to be held tomorrow at 11 a.m. in the Pepper Pike office of the third floor training room. So if you are interested in participating in that, please shoot me an email, give me a heads up, uh, let me know if you're interested, and we will get you uh, onto the invite and slotted in there. All right, and then next week, our last sales meeting for the month of July, uh, we are going to do our market center update. And so we've been doing these at the at the end of every month uh, and been getting, getting good feedback. It's an opportunity for you to hear from everybody on our leadership team. Um, and next week, we're going to be covering a lot of ground. We're going to be talking about the survey that you all participated in in the month of June. So we had some fantastic feedback, some great takeaways, and some really superior insights on what you all need from us as a leadership team. So we want to talk about how you'll see that show up uh, throughout the fall as, uh, as we talk about the fall calendar, updates to command. We're going to introduce some new business resource partners for you all as well. So um, this is going to be in, in heavy alignment with some of the, the feedback from the survey, but we have sought out some business partners to bring to bear for all of you to address the elements around your business that aren't necessarily real estate, but are still important to your business. So things like health benefits, 401k, uh, IRAs, financial investments, um, tax accounting, bookkeeping, things of that nature. All of that um, will be uh, teeing up some people to be supporting 
you uh, in the development there. Of course, we will hear from your favorite and only principal broker, Andrew Ginter. Uh, we'll hear updates from our productivity coaches and a lot more. So next week is going to be a great one to get a download on everything that is changing and evolving from our market center. And then our last event for the month of July will be our summer cookout at Edgewater Beach. Uh, that is from four to seven uh, at the Upper Edgewater Shelter. We are really excited for this. Um, uh, fingers crossed, it looks like right now uh, on the 10 day forecast, we are gonna get some good weather, uh, which is really exciting. And just wanna remind everybody that this is a family friendly event, bring your spouse, bring your kids, bring your pup, um, Ginter, bring your cats, uh, whatever, uh, whatever it is, whoever it is, you want to bring a client, bring a client. Um, this is just going to be, uh, you know, real casual, real social. Uh, if you want to bring a potluck and compete for uh, best side dish against my bean medley, you're more than welcome to, uh, we would strongly encourage that. I'm well, I welcome the challenge. Um, and, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys there. It will be uh, a lot of fun. We're excited to have this back on the calendar. Speaking of the calendar, uh, I just want to remind everybody, uh, there was a CE plan for this Thursday through GM title that has moved, uh, to August 19th. Uh, and that will be a, uh, one hour CE lunch followed by a little kayak trip, so an opportunity to uh, get some CE and, and, and burn some cows at the same time. Um, and uh, be on the lookout as uh, we will, uh, we have uh, coming up in the fall, uh, more opportunities for CE for everybody uh, in our office as we bring those uh, back into the fold post COVID. All right, and then the biggest thing on the horizon from a calendar standpoint is going to be Mega Camp. So Mega Camp uh, is August 23rd through 26th. Uh, early bird pricing is already gone. I'll have to update this slide, but we uh, we are really excited. This is going to be uh, for 99% of the people in our organization a virtual event. So it's going to feel like Family Reunion did in February. And there will be a ton of opportunity across those four days to plug in and learn and mastermind with other agents around the country and in our market center as we will aim to plan some gatherings for everybody to get together and share and care and enjoy each other's company here throughout uh, the Mega Camp experience. So the big, biggest part of Mega Camp, if you're wondering like, hey, what is it? Is it just like family reunion? You know, one of the biggest differences is um, the 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 key the keystone component of mega camp is it's about mega agents right and it's about what they're doing with their businesses and what's really cool is there's huge time chunks each day where gary keller the founder and ceo of our company interviews mega agents from around the world in person and deep dives their business live on stage and so you're going to hear really authentic, really genuine, really detailed uh, analysis of how mega agents, whether it's an individual agent, an individual agent with an admin, a mega team, a, a, a couple of spouses selling houses, whomever it is, wherever you're at in your business, you're going to be able to identify with somebody that is getting, uh, you know, getting the 20 questions from our uh, founder and CEO, Gary Keller. So this is a really, really exciting way to learn about other people's business and think about your business versus um, maybe your standard, uh, you know, uh, training uh, that might be available. Now, in addition to that, there are tons of breakout sessions, right? So every morning, uh, you're going to kick off with a, you know, very uh, mega agent interviews. And then in the afternoons, you're going to have the opportunity to plug in digitally to a bunch of different breakout sessions. So there's literally no piece of the business that I, I do not think is covered uh, throughout the course of mega camp. So whether you're in it for leads or listings or leverage or your database or new home sales, luxury sales, building a team, expanding a team, you know, wealth building, becoming financially free, leaning into prop share, all of these things are covered. And those panels are going to be moderated uh, by members of the Keller Williams uh, Realty International leadership team. And the panels are filled with, again, more agents who are succeeding in the market today in those specific disciplines. So a great way to plug in to resources globally uh, uh, as a part of Megacamp. All right. So 
I believe the link was just dropped in the chat for that as well. So if you are interested, uh, we will have uh, we'll have more information coming out on that, along with more information on what sort of events we'll be hosting here in Northeast Ohio. And with that, I would like to throw it over to Sean Hadley, freshed and refreshed off of his vacation, and also Mr. Don Jarecki for an update from Cross Country Mortgage. Guys, how are things going in the mortgage world? It's Things are going great. It's uh, obviously busy, just like everybody else. Um, this week, uh, a couple articles came out, rent prices skyrocketing nationwide, uh, even here in the Midwest, Northeast Ohio. Uh, we've been fortunate with interest rates, taking a little bit of a dip here over the past week or so, uh, just in time for me to get full stride back into the office. So 30-year um, fix, kind of sitting comfortably below three. Um, the uh, big announcement also that came out last, I think it was Friday. Um, last, this is more for refinances, but last November, the government, for lack of a better term here, basically just imposed an tax on refinances. For any loan over $125,000, the government was going to take a half a point chunk out of that, which raised any refinance an eighth of a percent or more. Uh, they got rid of that um, kind of somewhat, I don't want to say unexpectedly, but very suddenly. Um, so everybody refinancing, you know, here moving forward is going to get that eighth of a percent back off the interest rate. So that, along with a little dip in interest rates, you'll see refinance activity pop up, which again, reminder on that, when refinance activity up, is up, your average lender service goes down. So we don't see it, of course, here across country mortgage, but just always keep that in mind. Um, another one to touch on um, and I'm not running with this to say, hey, this is a great idea, but ARMS, adjustable rate mortgages. Um, I'm getting customers asking about, are ARMS there? What's an ARM look like? So ARM is an acronym for adjustable rate mortgage. Yes. And uh, the idea of an ARM, 30-year loan for, let's say, seven years, you might save a quarter of a percent on the first seven years. But after year seven, that rate may go up, may go down, probably would go up not really the best for most people who are buying a home and not sure how they're gonna live there, especially with rates at record uh, record lows. But just so you know, ARMS are available and uh, they are out there. Um, yeah. John, what do you, what do you, what do you think's driving that conversation? You think it would have been, you know, when we were at five or five and a half percent that they yeah. are part of the conversation. Yeah. With rates kind of gradually going up from, you know, February through last month, I think a lot of people are like, you know, they get thirsty for that missed opportunity of, hey, if I would have moved a, a month or two ago, I could have saved a quarter or a half a percent. So they're kind of like chasing their losses. And I'm, Don and I are going to, Chris are going to be the first to jump out and go, you know, <laughs> believe me, 3% or three and a quarter, whatever the rate is, is not bad. <laughs> Here's the chart of the last 50 years and you're all the way down here. Um, so I think that's probably a little bit of a driver and everybody kind of just, you know, it, it, there may have been an ad somewhere or a friend of theirs who got into something. Now, the person who might be the right appetite for this are our residents. You know, we're doing some doctor loans for residents coming into the area. They're here four years. If they stay for a fellowship, it's going to be six or seven years. And after seven years, they're going to, you know, graduate into a significantly higher income level or, you know, potentially move back out of state. So that's what we're seeing them most commonly. And again, we're not pushing anyone towards this. Anybody yeah. says, sign me up for an arm, they're gonna get a 15 minute PowerPoint lecture about the pros and cons, uh, heavily on the cons for that, so. Excellent. DJ. Yeah, lately, any arm product conversation I had has been regarding uh, around the non-conforming loans, like Sean said, like the doctor loans, um, by all means, I think uh, an arm is what every one of those individuals should go into because this is not going to be their forever home. And like Sean said, they're here for four years. So you're sitting on a seven-year arm or five-year arm. You're, you're going to come out ahead in the game. So those products are, are where we have the arm discussion. Anything non-conforming, um, including a bank statement program, we might talk about arms on those because they're short-term fixes for the customer until they've either, if you're self-employed, so you start claiming some income or like Sean said, in the resident situation, you move on to the next step, you buy a bigger home, you take advantage of a lower rate for the first four to seven years. Um, and I'm a big component of, uh, or a big fan of arms. I love adjustable rates. Every house I've ever bought, I've always started with an adjustable rate knowing full well it's gonna refinance in the first three to five years to a 15 year fixed. And that's been my, how I've operated buying houses over the years. So don't, uh, don't rule out arms. I mean, years ago they had, 
anywhere from a half to full 1% difference. But lately, like Sean said, it's been about a quarter to three eighths on any given day. But it's still, if you know you're going to be out there in five to seven years, save the money. Fantastic. Another, another good tool in our tool belt for our clients. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for that update. Uh, been a while since we heard about ARMS and uh, good, to get, uh, good to get that on the, <laughs> on the, in the mix for our, for our agents and our clients. All right, next up, we'll bring uh, Gina Legeza with uh, America's Preferred Home Warranty. Gina, great to see you again back on the calls. Thanks for being here. Uh, let's get you spotlit and, uh, and you can take it away. Thank you. It was wonderful to see everybody last week at our fantastic event, Mastermind. Really enjoyed uh, seeing our agents in person. Today, I thought I would discuss a did you know, Michael? Mm. Did you know that you don't have to have a home inspection to have our great home warranty coverage? The reason mm. I bring this up is, especially in the world that we're in today, it's vital. This could be the glue to the deal. Uh, it's providing a peace of mind. We always want to sell it with things. You need to be in good working order. If something is rickety and falling apart, we're not going to cover that. But as your warranty partner, you don't have to have an inspection to have phenomenal coverage. Another did you know, every time you put a home warranty on a home and sell a home warranty, you're digitally, our fabulous agents are going to get repair cards. It'll say the property address, Michael. It'll say what we repair. It's a great touching point to increase your business and relationship with your customer agents. Also, a lot of agents utilizing this repair card will touch back with their client and say, you had a great experience with America's Preferred. This is the kind of service I provide to you. Who do you know who's buying or selling? I'm even seeing our agents getting business off these repair cards, Michael. So please, when you get these repair cards digitally, utilize them to touch base with your clients, not only to check in, but see who else is maybe buying or selling. And lastly, the number one did you know that I'm getting is clients are calling me saying, my client changed their mind. They closed five days ago. I just gave them your 1-800 number. Please don't do that. They're going to pay $175 more and won't get our real estate pricing. And you as an agent won't receive your compensable fee for turning in your data collection form. If you have a client that's closed, I'd say up to a two week time frame, you can always get in touch with me. Again, I'll leave my information in the chat box. I will handle the paperwork with you. I will get it done so that our client receives real estate pricing. So that is my three bullet points of did you know? Love that. What a great opportunity for us to protect our clients, make sure that they save money, and also, as you mentioned, still protect our opportunity to earn on the partnership with America's Preferred Home Warranty. Thank you so much, Gina, as always, uh, for being such a huge team player here with Keller Williams Greater Metropolitan. My pleasure. All right. And then last but certainly not least, let's hear from Greater Metropolitan Title, Miss Tiffany Haddendorf-Smith and Jade Tishka. Uh, excited to uh, excited to have you guys on here. We had a great conversation, uh, what was it, last week, two weeks ago, with the title partners about everything that's uh, on the horizon for improving service operations, efficiency, everything. But excited to hear any updates you have this week. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just wanted to reiterate our upcoming CE. It is now taking place on August 19th. So mark your calendars. Um, we are asking that everyone arrive at 1145. We're planning on doing the lunch and CE at noon. Um, so if you guys uh, go on our social media Facebook page, we do have a PDF and it does have a live link. You can purchase tickets through there. So we hope to see you all there. Thank you, Jade. I just wanted to bring up two quick things. Um, so as most of you know, we went live with a new integration. It's called Predocs. Um, what it is, is your buyers and sellers will receive an email uh, from processing at gm-title.com. There is a secure link where your buyer and seller will log in, fill out all of their pertinent information that we need from them pre-closing, as well as their pre-closing documents, such as the wire, um, closing protection letter. Sellers are able to provide their wiring instructions here. They upload their IDs, give us their water sewer info, everything we need for a smooth and efficient closing will be done at the very beginning now. We've got, we're, 
we've gotten rid of the paper. So they don't have to print something out, fill it out, scan it back. Of course, if you have clients who um, are a bit old fashioned and still wanna do it that way, they're certainly welcome to, just let us know ahead of time if you can and we'll make sure to accommodate them. Uh, the second thing I wanted to bring to everybody's attention is there's a company called CloudStar that operates five data centers for upwards of 42,000 title companies in the United States of America. They are the most recent victim of ransomware fraud and criminals, and upwards of 42,000 title companies are not able to do business today or yesterday. Um, as far as I know, none of our local title companies have been affected. However, if you do know someone who has and, you, and they need assistance and you need assistance with your closing, we can work with them and our underwriter and their underwriter to see what we can't do to help out. The last thing we want is for a deal to fall apart or somebody not to be able to move in, anything like that. You know, the other title companies, they are competitors, but they are also our colleagues. And we wanna make sure we can do whatever we can to help them as well as your clients. So um, again, I don't know of any local title companies, but if you happen to hear from one of them and they say they can't do the closing because they can't access their cloud or their systems right now, give me a call, let's talk about it. If we can help, we will. All right, wonderful. Thank you for that update. Glad to hear that we and our peers here in Northeast Ohio We'll keep our fingers crossed and knock on wood that that trend continues. And so thank you very much, uh, Tiffany and Jade. All right. And I just want to make sure I didn't miss Jess Giotta. I thought she said she wasn't going to be able to make it this week. She will be back in action next week. So I um, want to dive into um, our, our training snippet for today. Conversation about... Um, as I alluded to at the beginning when we were going over our mission statement um, around the idea of your business, right? And I think for, you know, for a lot of us, I know for, for me, uh, prior to coming into this industry, you know, we have these, uh, we have these ideas about, about business and, and about leadership uh, and how those things play in um, and whether, you know, your business is has 30 employees, or you got a team of 12, or it's just you, make no mistake that, you know, that business performs in the way, uh, you know, uh, in the way that it's led, right? And I had a, uh, I had an, uh, an agent, one of our ALC members shoot me an article this morning that was so timely. It was from the, the Harvard Business Review, and it was talking about evolutions and leadership uh, in the, in the modern era. And I thought, you know, really for, for our industry and for the entrepreneur, there was probably nothing revolutionary in the conversation around, around leadership. Um, but what it did was talk about um, the juxtaposition of modern day leadership uh, versus, you know, what the, um, like the iconoclastic version is where there's a leader and he's a manager. She's, uh, she's got a team of 12 people and da, 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 da. And they, they focus on leadership. And what, what the article put forth was that the most effective leaders are the ones who are problem based, right? And they actually go through the activity of leadership, of leading others, not for the sake of leadership, but for the sake of finding a solution. And I thought that was very fitting for what we were uh, planning on talking about today as it relates to our business. Uh, our businesses. And it really, when you take the real estate business, your real estate business, you break it down, there are three legs of the race, right? And you've probably uh, heard, heard all of these before. You may not have seen it laid out like this, but there's the lead generation component, there's the lead follow-up component, and then there's transacting the business, right? I would argue that there's no nothing that you are doing related to your real estate business that is not falling in one of those three chunks, right? One of those three legs of the race. And so it starts at the top of the funnel with lead generation and it goes all the way through to payday as it relates to um, you know, us completing the transacting of the business. So I'll need some, uh, some audience participation here as we 
So we go into the next uh, portion of this conversation, which is really, you know, if we divide our business into those three segments, right? And we take this backdrop of problem based or solution based in a more positive light, leadership, where do we want to focus our leadership as individuals, uh, uh, leading businesses, as business owners over the course of the next several months, right? And so whatever, regardless of your goal, right, uh, and your pace to it, there is opportunity for you to improve your business uh, in one of these three segments, right? It is either in generating more leads, right? Or generating better leads. And then there is the idea of lead follow-up, right? Which uh, for uh, a lot of us, uh, myself included, can sometimes be the biggest, uh, the biggest challenge. And then there is transacting the business. And I'm going to say that transacting the business is all the way from you know, showing the house or, or putting the sign in the yard from a listing standpoint, all the way to getting, uh, you know, getting paid by Carrie Mitchell at the end of the transaction. So um, if you could uh, pop into the chat box and, you know, let me, let me know, let everybody know, hey, if you were going to pick one area where you're going to go solve problems for your business, is it in lead generation? Is it, hey, my lead generation is, inconsistent it's inefficient it's not big enough or is it in lead follow-up like yeah i feel like i come by a lot of leads i, I you know I've, I've got a lot of leads i've uh it's just keeping them all straight so to speak you hear that a lot like ah oh, geez yeah i know i've got i've got like 12 uh 12 buyers or 12 people that are interested right now that's really hard for me and you feel like oh you wake up one day and uh, somebody that you thought was going to be your client six weeks from now just uh, just went under contract, right? Or just listed with somebody else. And then finally, there's transacting the business. And and make no mistake that, you know, I think this one doesn't necessarily get the uh, get the time in the sun that it deserves because we uh, we think like, oh yeah, as soon as it's under contract, uh, you know, that's the that's the deal. But make no mistake. Um, you know, once you have a signed contract, you're, you have a signed contract. You don't have a deal, right? There's still contingencies. There's still relationship management. There's still navigating inspections and ROCs and working with appraisers, which we know is uh, getting, uh, starting to pick up a little bit, guys. Here's a, here's a fun fact for you. In the last seven days, 10% of the houses on the market took a price reduction, right? In the total MLS, over 600 homes took price reductions in the last seven days. And so, you know, if we, we don't think that there's something there uh, once we're under contract, we might be wrong. Now we can solve pieces of these um, with different resources, but going into the, uh, going into the chat, I'm seeing uh, lots of lead generation and lots of lead follow-up, right? So let's, let's go ahead and zero in on those two, right? So what's the diagnostic that you, want to do for your business in each one of those categories, right? And again, I promised you it was going to be super simple and super easy. And the question we need to ask here um, is, what am I currently doing, right? What am I currently doing for lead generation, right? And if you sat in one of our fantastic productivity coaching programs, you know that um, you're going to hear this thing about the rule of three, right? And what uh, we find time and time again is that we do, we will find ourselves doing a lot of things for lead generation, but inconsistently, or we'll find ourselves doing a lot of things for lead generation, but really spreading our resources extremely thin across everything, right? And so the easiest way to identify where to put time, energy, and resources to fix a lead problem which is 90% of the time, the first problem needs to be solved because once you have a lot of leads, then we'll solve the lead follow-up problem. Um, but if you have, um, you have this opportunity to take a step back, look at the deals you've done in the first six months of the year. Look at the deals that you've done in the last 12 months, right? If that gives you a bigger sample size. Or if you're new and you're like, hey, listen, I haven't done any deals. Look at where you've gotten any leads 
right? So you have you have leads. And I want to go on record here because I believe the, uh, the pay-to-play lead model has done a disservice in helping us or in leading us astray in terms of the quality of a lead, right? So the quality of a lead we will, we in the modern era, define as its proximity to transaction, right? If somebody needs to buy a house in the next four weeks, we think that's a really good lead. And, and, it, and it is a really good opportunity for us to get a tra- transaction in the bucket. But if somebody's not going to buy until you know this time next year, we'd say, oh, well, that's not a good lead. Well, no, I mean that's a that's as guaranteed a transaction. It's just on a different timeline, right? And maybe the conversation, as I saw a few people put in the chat, is there's an opportunity for our lead follow up. But when we think about our lead generation, right, and we think about the things that we're doing or not doing, and what is generating our business today, right? My encouragement, and I think that um, you know, either of our either of our coaches and uh, and a lot of people that are going to sit on panels at Mega Camp would tell you, is that if you're doing more than three things for lead generation, right? If you're focused on you know five or six or seven different things to generate leads, chances are your current deal set would tell you that there are one, two, or three th- things that are really going to generate your business. And if we doubled down on those then we have an opportunity to massively expand our business or run our lives more efficiently, right? Doing three things is always going to be easier than doing seven things, right? And so now if we're zeroed in on lead generation, we can move the conversation to lead follow-up. Now, lead follow-up is a little bit more ambiguous, right? Uh, Because you have the opportunity to do, I think, uh, you know, you now have this lead in hand and it's all about keeping the relationship warm. And so this is where conversations should start around the, um, you know, your marketing campaigns, your touch plans, your client events, right? And we're doing these things really intentionally to stay in rotation, right? So a lead is name, phone number, email, home address, right? Those, if I have those things, I have a lead. And then how I communicate to them with intensity and frequency, right, is going to dictate how Uh, how deep my relationship goes with them, which is going to increase the opportunity for me to transact business, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to pause here for just a minute. And if you can pop back into the chat and, you know, let, let everyone know like, Hey, what's something right from a lead generation standpoint um, that you have, you've done or uh, started doing, or maybe even stopped doing because it wasn't working. Like, what are the things uh, that you've had nahas in the first six months of the year around lead generation? Because I promise what you know, somebody else on this call doesn't know. And that sort of sharing can create a really good opportunity for somebody else to maybe change the course of their second half of the business. So, you know, is it success with uh, Facebook ads? Is it going back to past clients, right, to generate leads? Is it going, uh, is it doubling down on the referral process? What have we seen? Uh, where have we seen success? And there's no success too big or too small to be shared in, uh, in the chat right now. Is it is there anything, uh, and also don't don't be shy to talk about what uh, what your you know maybe what your shortcomings were, right? We heard on one of our panels a a, a great story from uh, from Shoshana and the Socher team uh, about how they invested uh, they invested in radio and just sold cards, um, and that's uh, and that's what you know they they did not see the yield there, so now they've just doubled down on Sphere. Um, all right. So seeing Facebook ads haven't been working re- recently from Zach, um, circle prospecting, absolutely huge guys. I know that the last 18 months have been weird. They've been weird for everybody. And, uh, the idea of knocking on doors might, you know, still seem a little bit out of bounds, but you know, if you've been to an open house or held an open house, um, those things can get rocking. And if we, uh, you know, follow the the keys to a successful open house. We can drive a lot of interest and a lot of energy around those events. Circle prospecting is huge. Uh, getting reviews from past clients and asking who do you know um, that might be making a move. Yeah, 
past clients, for those of you who, who, uh, who, you know, and make no mistake, if you're, if you've talked to your past clients in the last three months, they're, you know, they're ready to hear from you again. If you haven't talked to your past clients in three years, they're still going to be ready to hear from you. I promise. Uh, you know, a, uh, a, Hey, how you doing call is, uh, is one that always feels good. We've got a great script, the Ford script, ask about their family, ask about their occupations, ask about their recreation. What are you doing for fun and ask about their dreams? And Oh, by the way, who do you know that might need my help? Right. Uh, and then Rebecca says written notes uh, have been a huge plus for her. Rebecca, I know that uh, up to three listings in the same community just by sending out notes to everybody, letting them know what's going on with the house that you had listed. Right. So um, some great uh, opportunities there. Get in touch with your past clients. Ask for the review. Reward the referral. You know, if you're if you're comfortable with it, uh, get out there and beat the streets, knock on doors. Um, and I'll remind everybody, you know, pay attention to the Facebook group. There's always looking where people are always looking for somebody to uh, run a buyer, hold an open house, um, you know, do something that is going to put you in the activities that are going to help you build confidence and also help uh, potentially help you grow your business in the in the open house for right now. A little bit more difficult one. Uh, and so looking for uh, both wins and sins here on the lead follow-up component. So who has, uh, who's uh, leveraged a good system for lead follow-up? Who has seen success from, uh, let's say, you know, a drip campaign or a marketing campaign that has allowed them to draw people through this funnel or move them along the timeline? Uh, in a non-offensive way, right? I'll start with one that uh, I know if you've attended Bold, you know about this one, but it's the, the DTD2. Uh, and it's just, it's a, it's a great way to follow up with anybody in your database, right? And again, make no mistake, anybody in your database is a lead, right? Unless, uh, unless your database is uh, full of transients who will not be sleeping under a roof tonight, um, then there's a good chance that those people at some point in their lives will need to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. And so your ability to communicate with them puts you in a position to be the person to help them do it. So when we think about DTD2, it is simply just calling. It's called Do the Database 2. And it's where you call two letters of your database every week uh, uh, for 13 weeks. And then that's a quarter. And that means everybody gets a phone call from you every quarter. And don't worry, they don't have to pick up. A missed call, guys, is just as good uh, sometimes from a touch standpoint as a, a full connection because you're just like your email campaigns show up in their inbox, right? Your missed call, assuming you're saved in their phone, shows up in their call log and then gives, you know, gives them the opportunity to call you back. And who doesn't love inbound calls from leads, right? But again, if is, is there anybody out there who's having success or who's had a big aha or who's had something click as it relates to lead follow-up? All right, well, it sounds like judging or looks like judging by the chat box. All right, Carol, uh, what have you, what have you had? So I am good morning, everyone. So I've been kind of reaching out to a past clients that I've sold the house to and just kind of send them out smart plans where my assistant has. And I'm actually going to have put a couple of people houses on the market and I'm going to meet us uh, one tomorrow. So you know, just doing some lead, you know, follow up in the smart plan and all of that. I've been um, successful in that area and selling their houses that I've sold from. Yeah. Well, I think that that's a, uh, <clears throat> I think uh, the idea that something is better than nothing is very true in the lead follow up game, right? We see uh, a lot of paralysis by analysis amongst the agents when it comes to their marketing campaign or whether or not what they're going to post on Facebook or, or, you know, is this 
too much? Am I being too uh, uh, in their face? Yada, yada, yada. And the idea that you're showing up in their, in their inbox, in their missed call log, in a voicemail log, those, those are touches, right? And if they know that you know that they have a need some point in the future, or more importantly, right, in the simplest form, the more people that think about you and they think about real estate, the bigger your business gets, right? And so that lead follow-up is taking everyone that you know and getting them, yeah, it might be on a, on a smart plan. It might be a monthly neighborhood nurture. It might be a, a more robust 36 touch marketing plan. Um, and then, you know, the idea that you can keep track of, right, as, as Rebecca dropped in the chat, like who you talk to, when you talk to them, what you talked about, as there's a fan, is fantastic. You can, you know, you can do that handwritten. You can do that in any CRM. You can do that right in command. Um, but then you can, and then you can automatically just set a reminder to call them again in a few months, right? Or text them again in a few months or whatever it is. But um, this feels like, um, you know, if I'm doing a diagnostic uh, for, for the company right now, this feels like an opportunity for, uh, for us from a training and education standpoint is how do we get, uh, how do we get more resources around lead follow-up uh, for everybody in the market center? But, and then finally, we talk about transacting the business. You know, this is something and, and you know, maybe speaking especially to, um, you know, some of the some of the newer agents or agents that are just a, a couple years into the business. But the idea that, um, you know, there are opportunities to put more systems in place, right? Our contracts, 90 percent of the time are, you know, working with the with the same date timelines. And there's an opportunity for you to get really strong around, you know, when A happens, B happens, then C happens from the transacting of the business right and if you you know if there's an opportunity to if you need help there if you feel like your your systems are a little bit uh you know insufficient for the level of business that you're doing then that's the uh and that's the place you know please reach out to me or, or or anyone else in the leadership team about how we can support uh support that development but this is a great tool anytime you feel like uh, things are either really slow or really crazy, right? You can pull out uh, these, you know, this this little uh, this three part um, three part diagram, and say where is the problem in my business, right? Where do I want to lead change in my business, right? Have I generated a lot of leads, but I haven't generated a lot of business? Well, then it's probably lead follow-up, right? Or have I generated a lot of leads? I've done a good job following up, but I've had, you know, three out of 10 deals fall apart, right? Or I feel like I get a lot of business, but then I have to work too hard to transact it, right? That's something to diagnose, right? What is the limiting factor in your business right now? And then deliver uh, some diagnostics and some resources to change that. And ideally, and I would argue, you know, uh, well, ideally or not, there's always going to be one piece of your business that has an opportunity for improvement, right? So you generate a lot of leads. Now you got to get better at follow-up. You get better at follow-up. Now you got to get better at transacting the business because you've never had 10 pending before. Now that you get better at transacting the business, it doesn't seem so crazy to have so many pending. And you think, well, to increase my business, I need to increase my leads and you start this cycle over again. There's always going to be one piece that's there for you. And so I would encourage you all, and if you want to do it with me uh, or anyone else, uh, please let me know. Uh, I would love the opportunity to sit down and, and look at your business through this lens with you and help you, uh, help you identify what the next, the next step is in the growth of your real estate business. But um, you know, take this tool, use it, think about it next time you are pulling your hair out because you're so busy or the next time you are not nearly as busy as you would like to be, uh, pull this out and give it some thought and think about what is it, you know, what is the piece of your business if you could change tomorrow um, you want to lean into and then let's have a conversation about it. All right, gang. So that is uh, that's the long and the short of it today. We are uh, we're excited that next week we're going to have a full market center update for you. You're going to hear from every member of the leadership team. We're going to have a lot of great content, a lot of good updates. We'll have all of our partners back uh, to talk about what it looks like as we move through the month of August and in 
uh, towards the, dare I say, at the end of the year. My goodness, we are already, uh, we're already barreling through the month of July. Uh, it'll be Labor Day before we know it. So a lot of great opportunities left in the market. A lot of great opportunities on the horizon, I think, for our buyers as we continue to see things um, level off in terms of price appreciation. We're seeing price decreases. We know, uh, as we talked about last week, people are headed back to work. So there is plenty of opportunity afoot, my friends. And if you need any support in capitalizing on it, please don't hesitate to reach out for help. But we're glad you could join us this morning and we'll look forward to seeing you here next week. All right. Thanks, everybody.